Good evening. I would like to discuss with you reproduction. You have heard many times that ladies in their 50s, that means game over. But it's not. Well, egg production may be over, but not the game, and definitely not the ability to become mothers. Because to be a mother, that is defined as the woman giving birth to a child. And uh, th there are very many ways to do that nowadays. Uh, here we see Omkari Panwar. She is 70 and her husband, he was 77 when they got twins. So, I mean, the possibilities are there. Making babies has become biotechnology. Approximately 15% of us will have problems become pregnant when we really try to. This is worldwide. And uh, the, re the reasons and the problems have, um, have, um, have many reasons. So, I mean, age is one reason, of course, but it's also infections and overweight. But as I said, biotechnology can be a helper. And I would like to discuss with you not only the possibilities, but also the dilemmas. In the upper panel to the right, to the left, uh, sorry, you will see a uterus. We women produce one egg per menstruation cycle. But if we use hormones, we can stop the menstruation cycle and then kickstart it again to produce many, many eggs. And they can be harvested by specialized needles and then put into a petri dish waiting for the sperms. Men are usually much easier here, although they find it sometimes quite awkward. But you, the procedure is quite simple. You give them a few juicy magazine and a big plastic beaker, and off they go. And after some while, they come back with the little beaker. It's added to the Petri dish. Fertilization takes place and the f eggs is put into the incubator and it starts to divide. After a few days in the lab, then it's ready for introduction into the uterus, usually one or two eggs, uh, and the pregnancy can start. But if you have excess eggs, they can go to the freezer. And we have had twins being born 13 years apart because one of the twins has been in the freezer for, as I said, 13 years. But males sometimes have problems with reproduction too. Usually a man can produce millions of sperm cells in one dose, uh, as long as he doesn't ejaculate too often. So this guy here, he has obviously been too busy. But if there is a small production of sperm cells, well, the doctor can take out some needles and start hunting for single sperm cells in the testicles. Instead of showing you a picture of the puncturing of the testicles, males usually hate this. So I will instead show you the magical moment when one of these sperm cells is injected into the egg. It looks a bit tough, but I can assure you it works very well. And what is nice here is by using this method, we can later actually do genetic tests of this coming baby. So let's say that if we leave again this fertilized egg in the lab for a few days, then we can apply another technology that is genetic testing of single cells. Here you see the embryo and the doctors start to drag out a cell or two and do genetic tests on this single cell if there is a genetic disorder in the family. 
And I never stop being surprised that you actually can remove up to 20% of a coming child and still it goes very well. But by showing these uh, pictures, I would also like you to reflect on how easy it is actually to handle eggs and a fertilized egg and an embryo. So it's really necessary to have regulation because these cells are, after all, a coming baby. Now let's make a jump. Reproduction is actually an international business. That means that um, it is going on worldwide, but that means also that business involves buying and selling. It's illegal to sell tissue, and it's illegal to sell cells to try to avoid the exploitation of poor or unfortunate people. Still we know that buying and selling goes on, but it's called compensation. Uh, in Norway, it's uh, illegal with egg donation and it's illegal with surrogacy. A surrogate mother is a woman who gives birth to another woman's baby. If you need this kind of support, that is usually either of medical reasons, you can be male homosexuals, or it's simply women who want a child but do not want the burden of being pregnant and giving birth. In India, to be a surrogate mother is regarded as a job, but she is usually paid one-tenth of what the parents are paying for having a baby this way. Yeah, and uh, she is usually spending almost the whole time at the clinic because these months in the uterus is so important for the future health of the child. The parents want complete control. But most women really enjoy being pregnant and they really want to be able to carry their child and give birth to it. It's usually the eggs that are the problems. So, what do we do? Well, if you are approaching 40, you simply should hurry up. But if you are a single woman without you no know, husband uh, in, uh, <laughs> near, uh, near you, then you should go to internet. It's a broad selection of opportunity there. You can um, order, uh, of course you would order sperm from a healthy, good-looking, athlete, intelligent Vikings. You name it, you find it. And it's the same with egg donations too. There are auctions for eggs from models, or we can see that Harvard students actually are financing their studies by doing so-called egg donations. So let's now go into the real hardcore family planning and the ice cold family planning. Marilyn Monroe, she was singing, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe it's the freezer. But careful, guys, before you start wrapping neatly up a freezer to present to your wife, that can create a tremendous hullabaloo. <laughs> Don't ask me what hullabaloo is. I have five freezers. <laughs> but here is the magic moment. It's the fertilization itself. When a sperm enters the egg, Within microseconds, the membrane turn tough to avoid, of course, these other guys to enter the egg because that would create a tremendous genetic chaos. So this tough membrane is also magic for freezing 
because that is the key for why we are able to freeze fertilized eggs so much better. And they have been frozen really for decades. But that's not good enough. Because if you are a young woman who has got cancer, she would of course like to freeze either her ovaries or unfertilized eggs so that she could have the possibilities of having babies later. But then you can say, hey, but that's something for me too. Of course, this is the real, real good news that the scientists now have managed to give us new procedure for freezing unfertilized eggs. It's not huge technological steps. It's a matter of changing the recipes and also the freezing procedure itself. So let's have a look at the opportunities again. This time, you can store and freeze your eggs when they are of good quality. Because otherwise, when we walk through life, the eggs are accumulating genetic defects, genetic damages. But that's the same with you guys too. The sperm cells also accumulate genetic damage. And we also see this by the looking at the children of older males they have a higher incidence of cognitive problems. So here we have a possibility where we actually can store high quality eggs. And we see firm can helping us here. I have been looking at the internet to see the possibilities. And here you see one of the firms I found, it's straight to what's all about. Freeze your egg in time and you can take them out when it need, you need it, and they're good quality eggs. And here is another one. It's just straight to the point. So I would like to conclude. Biotechnology has really made thousands of people very happy by becoming parents. But I will also challenge you by asking you some questions to think about. What would you think will happen to a society if these methodologies were widely applied? What would happen to family structure, to family relation? What would actually be a family? What is a mother? What is a father? How do we regulate the international uh, market for surrogacy? How do we protect the surrogate mother for poor payment and poor condition? But last but not least, how do we protect the children? How do we avoid the, that uh, children will, uh, will not be according to the wishes of the parents? What happens then? We also see that children are not picked up at the surrog surrogacy clinic because the parents have changed their mind. And how do we actually avoid that children become a commodity when all the steps in their making is commercialized? These are hard questions, and there are no easy answers. But they must be answered, and the way we are answering them will have consequences for all of us. Thank you.